Is this the ultimate evolution of the road bike and the sort of road bike we might all be riding in the future? Well, roads aren't getting any smoother. In fact, they're getting much rougher and many of us are seeking to go off-road in a way we never have done before on drop bar road bikes. So this could be the sort of bike that suits the riding that many of us are doing from road to gravel and trail and everything in between. It is of course the brand new 3T Exploro Race Max, a follow-up to that radical and controversial Exploro which launched about four years ago, the world's first dedicated gravel aero bike. Now it was met with quite a reception, uh, quite a few interesting comments when it launched, but it got on to be quite a successful bike for the small Italian company. They're not selling big numbers of course, but lots of people who want that speed, that road bike handling and geometry but in a bike that can go off-road and handle a wide variety of terrain, this bike is clearly popular. I got to ride one last year in the Jeroboam gravel race over in Italy, about 150 kilometers up and down mountains, roads and gravel tracks and all sorts of terrain. And the 3T Explorer was the perfect companion, the perfect choice for this ride. Fast on the road and great off-road as well and great fun to ride, just a really good bike. <laughs> It's easy to think that aerodynamics only applies to pro riders in a pro peloton at races like the Tour de France, but we can all benefit from improved aerodynamics. Above a certain speed, about 15 miles per hour or thereabouts, wind resistance, the air you face, is the biggest hurdle you have to overcome, more than rolling resistance and mechanical resistance in a drivetrain and so on. So we can all benefit from improved aerodynamics. Now, of course, the rider, the body makes up about 80% of the drag. So that still leaves a potential gain to be had from the bike. Uh, we all know aero wheels are faster than regular wheels and aero frames. Although we're talking about small percentages, it's still an area you can exploit if you want to go faster. Let's dive into tech details on the brand new Exploro Race Max. And it's important to note that it doesn't replace the current and previous Exploro that lives on in the range. This new Race Max sits alongside it as a more aerodynamic model and a bigger tire clearance model compared to that previous bike. There's a lot of carried over technology, but there's some big changes on this new bike to make it potentially faster and to get more capability if you're going off-road. So first up, tire clearance has been improved and you're looking at 700 by 42 or 650B by 61. So a substantial improvement over the previous Exploro. And aerodynamics have been improved, and you can see that visually from looking at the pictures I'm showing you now. It's the new down tube. They've got a much bigger profile than before, and about halfway down where the water bottle cage is, it flares out to a massive 74 millimeter width. So the idea there is to further shield the water bottles on the down tube and the seat tube from the airflow coming around the down tube. So narrow at the top, where the air comes off the fork and the front wheel and wider where the water bottles are to try and decrease drag. The seat tube now curves around the rear wheel with tire clearance that would cause a few people sleepless nights, no doubt. But 3T says there's still ample mud clearance. All tube profiles use the familiar truncated aerofoil profile that's common on aero bikes in the road bike industry. The head tube is as narrow as possible to reduce the frontal surface area but if oversized the steering tube and use a special headset bearing to increase their stiffness. So they're maintaining the stiffness, but reducing the frontal surface area from that slim head tube. The fork is also on the receiving end of a lot of changes. Got a really low profile, slim crown. The fork is really short, the same as a road bike with the axle to crown measurement of 370 millimeters. And you've got that familiar aero shaping. Internal cable routing throughout the bike as well. Flat mount disc brakes, which accept 160 millimeter rotors with no adapters needed as we've seen on previous bikes. And then out back, we have both chainstays are now dropped as we first saw on the open wide, which of course was designed by the same person, Gerard Vrooman, who had designed this new 3T Exploro Race Max. So they've dropped rear stays, both increased tire clearance and improved stiffness at the back end. There's the same aero seat post as before with an internal seat clamp. And thankfully, they switched from their really fiddly uh, 3T saddle clamp, which is really difficult to get the saddle at the right angle, in my experience, to a simple single bolt Ritchie design, which should be much easier and more reliable to use than a previous design. And you can retrofit it to a previous Exploro if you're a current owner. So good news there. 
The geometry is largely unchanged from the previous version, so if you're upgrading, you won't find a dramatic difference. One big change though is the move to six sizes rather than the previous four, so much easier for a wider range of rider heights to fit this new bike. Uh, geometry details, the chainstays are the same diddly 415 millimeter length as before, thanks to dropped rear stays I mentioned previously. The reach is the same, broadly speaking, but the stack has been raised, so the handlebars were a bit higher than the previous bike, so a little bit less aggressive than the previous Explorer, but by and large, roughly the same. Oh, the bottom bracket's dropped a little bit as well for a bit more stability, but small tweaks and refinements rather than any radical changes to the new Race Max. It's customary now to have lots of eyelets and mounts on a gravel bike for versatility, and the new Race Max has mudguard mounts, which is great to see as a UK based cyclist with a lot of rain through the winter to contend with. And this being a bike you can put slick tyres on for some winter road training, that's a nice thing to see. You can fit three water bottles to the bike, uh, two in the main frame and one under the down tube. And you've got those two bolts on the top tube for putting a, a small food pouch on top of the bike. <laughs> It's a new way, a smarter way of measuring tyres. Now, I've had lots of questions and I've had a bit of a dialogue with many people on social media, Instagram, Twitter, links down below, about the width of tyres and how it corresponds to the rim width. And the rim width and the tyre width are two interrelated aspects that are really key to determining the actual width of a tyre. So you buy a tyre, a 40 millimetre gravel tyre perhaps, and depending on the rim, whether it's a narrow internal rim width or a wide internal rim width, that tire might be different. It might come up narrower, it might come up wider. And this is an issue, especially on gravel frames where you might be pushing out the boundaries of tire clearance. And I know quite a few people who have bought a gravel tire and it's not fitted in their bike because it's come up wider than the advertised width. So all this is a nightmare, not just for consumers buying tires and upgrading wheels on their bikes and finding issues with the actual width compared to the advertised width. It's also a nightmare for bike designers when you're trying to design a bike and recommending the max uh, tire clearance on a bike especially if you're trying to make an aero bike as a race max is. So to ensure they can optimize the frame design, how close that seat tube is and the down tube is to the tires, they really looked at uh, tire widths and tire radius in a way that we've never seen before and come up with a whole database which they're gonna share on their website. And they've also come up with two new three letter acronyms for us all to become familiar with and add to the already burgeoning uh, dictionary of bike terms. So we have, if you're ready for it, RAM, and wham, yes really, it's not something from Batman. It's actually two really interesting and quite common sense ways of measuring a tire to give you the actual dimensions of that tire. So ram is short for radius as measured and it's a radius of a tire measured from the axle. So the radius of a tire decreases with the increased internal width of a rim and the graph they shared gives you the actual radius on different width rims from 19 millimeters to 29 millimeters internal width. And then we have WAM, which is width as measured. This is the actual width of the tire. And generally speaking, the wider the internal width of a rim, the wider the tire will be. So as I mentioned, 3T have tested loads of tire brands that they're the really popular tires on different width rims. It doesn't matter what brand rim you're using, what matters is the internal width. And through this uh, collection of data, they've been able to find that most tires, generally speaking, fall into a fairly small sort of uh, area and they designed their 3T Explorer Race Max around this to ensure there's no issues with um, tires fitting down the road for customers buying different tires and also to optimize the frame around what it sees as a broad range of tires and wheels. It is really interesting stuff and I'm genuinely fascinated by this approach. And it's easy possibly to dismiss it as marketing or hype, but I think there's really something here. Whether these terms are the ones we adopt going forward, I think a system like this, a library, a database, or whatever you want to call it, is a really smart way to help us consumers and bike designers get the right tires on the right rims to suit different applications and make sure there's no issues with compatibility down the road. Now it's worth remembering when Gerard Rubin was at Cervelo, he was um, largely a proponent of stack and reach as a way of fitting people to bikes. And that's something uh, most bike designers and us consumers, bike riders, now use when buying a new bike. So you know your stack and reach makes it much easier to choose a bike regardless of seat angle, head angle, top shoe length, and other measurements on a bike. So this could have the same impact as stack and reach all those years ago, or it might not, who knows? Um, it's up to you guys what you think of it, uh, whether you embrace it, and whether other bike designers embrace it. 
but I certainly think there's a desire, a need for a system like this, which makes it easier to choose the right tires on the right rims for your bike and your application of riding. And then we come to builds and prices. And here it gets really interesting because 3T has identified three target customers, three typical customers for the new Explorer, which it calls all round race and the maximizer. And it's identified the different demands of these riders and built the bikes to suit with different tires, wheel sizes and components. So a really interesting approach. It should make it easier as a customer to identify one of these types of customers and then pick the bike to suit your riding. All Road is a roadie wanting to embrace off-road but doesn't want to give up that road speed they're used to. The Gravel Racer wants the fastest setup possible for doing gravel events like Dirty Kansas. And the Maximizer is for the rider who wants to embark on big challenges but it's not about the top speed, but getting around a big 200 all day gravel event in a reasonable time and not being back in the dark. For the all road and racer, it offers the Explorer race. It's built around 700 C wheels with 35 to 50 millimeter wide tires for the fastest possible setup with a choice of one by or two by. The Maximizer switches to smaller 650B wheels for even bigger tires for more comfort and capability off road with between 47 and 61 millimeter wide tires and a one by drivetrain for the reduced complexity and simpler shifting it offers. There can be a full range of builds then, starting with Shimano GRX at $4,199, going right up to a nearly $8,000 SRAM Force Access setup, or you buy a frame set on its own for $3,200. So that, in a nutshell, is a brand new 3T Explorer Race Max, as radical as the previous original Explorer all those years ago. No less controversial, but a really interesting bike and I can't wait to get my hands on one and find out what it's like to ride and hopefully that will happen soon. As you can tell, I'm in my garage and just reporting on this new bike and sharing my opinion on a new bike and hopefully get some debate going down in the comment section. So back to my intro, is this the future of road bikes? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all again soon.